أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم القارعة ما القارعة وما أدراك ما القارعة يوم يكون الناس كالفراش المبثوث وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه هاوية وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية Now we begin inshallah ta'ala with the discussion of the surah itself القارعة ما القارعة وَمَا أَذْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَةِ We're going to bunch these three ayat together because they're very similar. القارعة, if you want to be very basic and raw in translation, that which rattles, the rattler, okay, or the knocker, or the destroyer even. It's, Allah is describing something that engages in the act of something. The noun is something by definition that engages in the act of something. This is an ism fa'il. Now, the thing of it is, the word qari'ah in Arabic is used specifically, qara'a as a verb is used when two things hit against each other, and they produce a loud noise. A loud, not just loud, but disturbing noise. If you are not disturbed by the noise, you will not call it, will you not use the word qara'a for it. But if you're perturbed by it, annoyed by it, scared by it, then you will call it al qari'a. Okay? For example, if two cars crash into each other, and you hear a loud, loud sound, you, would, you can call that qari'a. Why? Because it disturbed you. Of course, the most common usage of it is qara' al-bab. To knock on the door in the middle of the night when people are sleeping and when you knock really hard, what happens? It disturbs their sleep. It bothers them and their peace is gone. And of course, a few things happen. First of all, you weren't expecting it. Second of all, it disturbed your peace. Third of all, you're even scared. Fourth of all, you don't know who's there. You don't know what this is about. It comes as a shock to you. right? So there are lots of things happening with al qariah Allah uses this as one of the descriptions of the Day of Judgment. Al-Azifa, Al-Tammatul Al-Kubra, right? Al-Sakha. There are many different descriptions of the Day of Judgment. This is one of them. And the, the use of the benefit of this word, from a litera- literary point of view is, what Allah is teaching us about the Day of Judgment is, it is like that night visitor who comes all of a sudden, and you weren't expecting him. And when he comes, when this Day of Judgment comes, you're gonna be what? You're gonna be shocked? You're not gonna be expecting it? And the, the rattling noise is going to wake you up, meaning right now you are what? Asleep. You're asleep and it's going to come and it's going to wake you up. And when it wakes you up, you won't know what hit you. You don't know what's going on. Which has been described in Surah Al-Zilzal already because the human being said, مَا لَهَا What's wrong with it? What just happened? The, the shock will, ca- will capture you. So the word al qariah is very descriptive in regards to the Day of Judgment. It's very beautiful usage. So now, now let's talk a little bit more about the, the traditional interpretation of the word qari'ah. We'll look at the tafsir of al-Shawkani, al-Lusi and others. I'm just going to read off some things in Arabic and translate for you quickly. وَالْقَارِعَةُ مِنَ الْقَرْعَ وَهُوَ الضَّرْبْ بِاعْتِمَادٍ شَدِيدٍ Qari'ah comes from the word qari'ah, which means to strike with great resolve. Meaning strike something really hard. You meant to hit it. You know there's sometimes you, meet, you hit something by accident. Qari'ah can't be that. It has to be بِاعْتِمَادٍ شَدِيدٍ مُعْتَمِدْ on purpose. And you hit it really hard on purpose. وَهِيَ مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ الْقِيَامَةِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ And it's of course from the names of Resurrection Day in the Qur'an. قِيلَ سُرْمِيَتْ بِهَا لِأَنَّهَا تَقْرَعُ الْقُلُوبِ بِالْفَزْعِ It is said that it's called al qariah because on that day hearts will be rattled out of fear. وَتَقْرَعُ أَعْدَاءَ اللَّهِ بِالْعَذَابِ uh, or Allah bil adab, and it's called the day of judgment because the the enemies of Allah will be rattled on that day because of punishment. So that's one opinion we find traditionally. وَقَدْ أَكَّدَ هَذَا التَّعْظِيمُ وَالتَّفْخِيمُ بِقَوْلِهِ بَعْدْ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَةُ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَةُ And it said that Allah Azza wa Jalla repeated the word three times to let you know how heavy this calamity is. So the three times repetition makes it three times as heavy and emphatic. The to, to make it grand, a tafhim to make it heavier and to make it scarier. But I want to share with you a brilliant discussion that a Shaykh Sha'rawi rahimahullah had in regards to these three ayat. This is the this is one of two surahs in which this style is the beginning of the surah. Al Qariatu, Mal Qariatu, Wama Adraka, Mal Qariya, Al Haqatu, 
ما الحاقة وما أدراك ما الحاقة now القارعة we just said the rattler the loud noise okay then or the destructive noise what is the destructive noise ما القارعة then a third وما أدراك ما القارعة what will give you any clue what this destructive noise is three times القارعة the word occurs three times القارعة ما القارعة وما أدراك ما القارعة by the way, in the Qur'an, as we will see later on, this word occurs a total of five times. Of them, three times right here. So two more times left, okay, elsewhere in the Qur'an. But we get to that a little bit later. The point I'm trying to come, bring to your attention, first of all, كَلِيمَةٌ تَكَرَّرَتْ ثَلَاثَةْ مَرَّةٌ This is a word that has been repeated three times. But then, الْمَرَّةُ الْأُولَى كَأَنَّ فِيهِ إِبْهَامٌ The first time it is mentioned, it is as though there is some ambiguity in it. It's not explicitly clear. In other words, when you just say a word in Arabic, especially when you put al on a word, this is considered a mubtada. It's the opening of a sentence. And when you say the opening of a sentence, what does the listener expect? The closing, the subject. The, if the subject is mentioned, they expect a predicate. For example, if I said to you, the city of Dallas, and I didn't say anything more. You're left, the, the reader's left thinking, what about the city of Dallas? You know, there's confusion. What, what do you want to tell me? You didn't finish what you were going to say. Allah says Al-Qari'ah, but He doesn't finish it. The ayah is done. What question comes in your mind? The question that comes in your mind is, what calamity? What rattling? When that question is produced in your mind, it is as though Allah Azza wa Jal reads your mind and says what in the next ayah? Mal qari'ah. Are you wondering what this qari'ah is? And whenever there is a question asked, Whenever there's a question asked, the principle is, إِبْهَامٌ يَدْعُ الْإِنسَانِ أَنْ يَسْأَلَ مَا الْقَارِعَةِ The ambiguity makes the human being question, what is al-qari'ah? What is it? And so naturally, the next ayah is, مَا الْقَارِعَةِ But whenever you have a question, then you, it necessitates the يَتَطَلَّبُ الْجَوَابِ it, it demands an answer. It demands an answer. And as soon as the, the curiosity and the, the desire to seek an answer is Produced in the mind, Allah Azza wa Jalla lets us know you can't know for yourself. There's no way you can get the answer to that unless I give it to you. وَمَا أَضْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَةِ What would give you any clue? What would give you even the slightest idea what al-qari'ah happens to be? Now we come to the next ayah. يَوْمَ يَكُونُ النَّاسُ كَالْفَرَاشِ الْمَبْثُوثِ 